Hey everyone, so today is the day we'll make the first pulls on the hub dyno here. Got everything hooked up, just waiting for the call in from Dynacom to uh, team view into this deal and just kind of watch over the first few pulls, make sure everything goes smooth. Uh, and we should be good. I got the tuning laptop in there because Clyde's a little bit different with the 6L80E. I think I have to command to stay in fourth gear. You want to make most of your pulls in fourth gear at one to one. But otherwise, everything is set up and ready to go. So as soon as we get logged into this deal, we will hopefully make some pulls. I just got off the phone with Paul. He's going to log into TeamViewer here, and we're going to make a few pulls on the Mazda. Uh, just run everything up to about 80 mile an hour. Make sure that everything looks good as far as that goes. And uh, then we'll plug everything in and make some pulls. But he just wants to check load and make sure everything looks good in the computer. I'll have to play with the Mazda and hopefully get it locked into fourth gear, but if not, that's something I can play with later. Um, but I'm going to try to do it so it's a true pull. And we will go from there. I'm going to give the camera to April and let her record some of this. Actually in there right now verifying all the setups on the pods, uh, making sure all the computer settings and everything is correct right now. So I, uh, I have no control, but hopefully we, we have something running good here soon. Okay, can you start driving? Just go up to around 60 mile per hour and hold it there for about 10 seconds. All right, so we're going to get the car running. We've got to get up to 60, 70 mile an hour so you can check everything and then we'll go from there. We just made that. I said everything looked pretty decent, so turn this box off, plug these in, and then make sure that we have uh, 220 at the pods because the, there's a voltmeter right here that will tell us, I guess. Put this one in. I went ahead and moved the ground clamp. We need to get the ground clamp back to our deal. Um, there we go. So now I will kick these on. Power got the pods. And now we got yeah 245 volt there. That works. And two forty-six volt there. So that's a pretty cool little display on the back there that gives you all the information you should have. We verified that it has the voltage that it's supposed to at each pod. It says what's the diameter of the tire that the car runs, so we put in, hey, let him know 23. So he'll probably come up here, create a new session, and go through all the things like what we did. We're going to do our first pull here with the uh, hubs actually active and get a horsepower reading and all that. Hopefully it all goes smooth. i got to try to lock this car into fourth gear, otherwise that's a whole other issue i got to try to figure out, but we're going to do our best here. So here's the first run. We'll see what he says about it. Um, let's see if it did what it was supposed to do, I guess. <laughs> so it said it made 282 horsepower and 342 foot pounds of torque. Um, I also only revved it like 40 some hundred RPM. The car kind of came up and held right there. So we'll see what he thinks. So we're gonna do the exact same thing again and try it. The flat spot, I think, is where I like was rolling into it, and then I really, I didn't like roll in hard i just kind of rolled in and then i let up and then i went again a little nervous on the uh on it so
crazy when it kicks up like that. I don't know if it downshifted. It sounded like it downshifted there. So that might be some of the part where the automatic's hard. So we'll see. I mean, it's pretty close there. Let's see what he says. So he's saying we're going to do a ramp test. Um, ramp tests hold the car at a state throughout the whole pool. So um, it's hard on parts because it'll just hold everything back if it needs to, especially this type of a hub with that type of a car that doesn't make power to push through it. So um, we're going to just really watch this, make sure everything feels right, do a ramp test, and uh, hopefully everything goes good. So I just typed in that. Uh, you guys can see one pass I made 283, the other one I made 293, and then 361 torque and 382 torque. So the torque numbers are gonna be off a little bit when it downshifts, cause it's using a different gear ratio to produce that. So you're always trying to get to one O gear in the transmission. And if it downshifts, you're using extra gearing from the transmission to apply extra torque, just like anything would. So that can actually throw off your numbers. So this is some stuff that we just gotta play with, learn and figure out. So we did a few little tests there just to verify that it's holding speed, getting me used to rolling in the throttle while the car stays at speed. It's a real weird thing when you roll in there and the car just lugs down and then it'll take off after five seconds. So we're gonna do another ramp test um, and see how it goes. Okay, so this ramp run, uh, because it holds the car back so far and then if it downshifts, it's gonna put a lot more leverage like on the drive shaft tranny, everything. So I'm gonna actually try to go into HP tuners and change the settings for where the transmission will upshift and downshift and then uh, try this again so hopefully it doesn't try to like downshift real far um and put an extra load on the car so i'm just going to look at my settings real quick and see if i can possibly like just help that from happening it held it back but not very long ramp test is very difficult All right, everyone, so we're gonna kind of skip the ramp test with the auto and it wanting to shift. I got it to lock in gear there, but then it, there's things with converters and the transmissions where it won't like let it flash up there. And if it can't get that, it'll drag the motor down or whatever. So um, we'll come back, I'll do a ramp. I did one down on their dyno in a stick car and it holds it at speed and then takes off with a converter. Uh, it's like trying to lock and lock the converter and Clyde's a pain anyway, cause the style of transmission that it has and the lack of control I have over that transmission. So. I, so it gives me something to play with and learn too as we go, but we're going to go back onto the roll-on test, which is what I'll use mostly anyway, and uh, try to get some numbers here. Just going back in here, setting it up, do a new run, roll-on, looks a lot like what I saw down there at the class, uh, interpolated load, yep, 250 to 499, that looks pretty good. <coughs> going to go next, gear <laughs> ratio. It's 350 gear ratio, next. And then we can uh, make another pull here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop back in. We'll make one more pull, hopefully get some good numbers and see what the car makes. I mean, we kind of had an idea earlier, I think it was 270, 280, and we tried to do this other test, now we're back to this one. So um, just playing and learning. So I think we got it figured out. I needed to be above 60 mile an hour to start at, and I wasn't with the uh, transmission the way that it shifts. So I'll start the run a bit higher in RPM, and then we'll go from there. So we spent the morning playing around with it, trying to learn it. The first pull went great. 
a couple more playing with it the thing is is with this car it wants to downshift so that's constantly causing issues so um i know what i need to do now i just need to stay here and play with the dyno and try to get repeatable runs uh for myself for the car just try to figure out what settings i need to use maybe in hp tuners to lock the car in fourth I could, it would work then it won it and that's some of the pain with stock computer electronic transmission type stuff anyway uh so not exactly the easiest car if we had something like the buick on there yet it makes a bunch more power when you put it in a gear it's going to stay in the gear until you shift it um another thing with this car has a super tight converter but converters can play havoc on the dyno because the dyno will throw load at it the converter won't hook and then try to give it all the power uh so you you kind of run into this weird state with the converter so i'm going to play with that some right now just try to get comfortable play with some settings and see what i can do and see if i can get some repeatable runs out of this so then i feel comfortable with me knowing what settings work for me and what i need to do with the car to get it to give repeatable settings pretty nice having the mazda like it is uh being able to just keep making pulls on it to try to figure some of this out that so we did get everything to kind of work and give some good readings we ended up with one run that made 303 horsepower and 354 torque and then another one that had 296 horsepower and 375 torque so um, pretty close but one i revved it out further some of it i just need to spend some time looking in here and figuring out like rpm this is horsepower here uh, and then you can come down here and it also gives you some some numbers kind of cool gives you the gain percentage based on the first one you can stack as many runs as you want on here so this is pretty neat um, so once I end up with a bunch of runs, I can take it home and just pull open the computer and kind of click through, adjust some things, and kind of like uh, figure out how the reporting on all of it works. So I'm going to go ahead and set this all up. Gear roll on. I went new run up here, then gear roll on. I'm going to actually try um, 45 mile an hour this time to see what it does. And then it could get worse because the converter, maybe maybe it'll work though, because then I'm not so high in the RPM. So right now I only have about 2000 RPM to play with. And then gear ratio, 350 gear, next. Um, I could put notes in here, but I'm good. And there we go, so then it auto zeros. I'll go ahead and get in the car and we'll try to make a run. So got a solid run there, got the graph pulled up here, made 283 horsepower at 4,000 RPM and made max torque at 3,425 RPM. Back into HP tuners and I actually had the wrong gear ratio in there. So I knew the speedometer had been off for a while, but right there it said I went up to 5,220 RPM. And on here, I'm only seeing as high as like 4,400 RPM. So I'm gonna make this again. I don't know if maybe that'll screw with the data log in the computer to match with this or whatever. So I'm gonna to try to make one more pull, see if the RPMs match. If not, I'll be looking at something else. All right, just adjusted the gear ratio in the HP tuners. Gonna to make another pull here and see if we can get the RPM to match what the car's seeing and what the uh, computer's seeing. I can also hook up the RPM sensor and maybe that's what I need to do to start figuring out if it's off or not or whatever. So, so as long as this gives me a matching reading, other than the RPM being a little goofy, um, try this one more time. If it matches, call it a good day. Learned a lot today, and then try to do some more research, learning, looking at the computer settings, everything, understanding what works when it needs to. Uh, I've never really been on a dyno other than a handful of times, nothing with a dyno thumb other than down at the training. Just kind of learning day it was but i'm having a blast doing it it's just a lot of mind power i guess you could say right there's 2300 rpm
ahead and revved it out a little bit further there. 274, 364. But I am still getting a max of 4,400 RPM, so I need to figure out what's causing my RPM reading to be off. All right, everyone, I'm gonna jump into the video real quick right here. Uh, as you can see, I start finding an issue with the RPM not matching what the car is actually running. So this is why the torque numbers seem high throughout the video. The car makes about 350, 380 torque. That's stock numbers from the factory. Uh, minus 20% drivetrain loss should be somewhere... Uh, the car definitely shouldn't be making 360 torque. So horsepower numbers will usually stay the same and RPM will definitely change the torque reading. So this is what I figured out when I got back and was looking at the runs and the software is that you can come in here and look at the RPM. And now I've made some changes to the RPM slash gear ratio to make sure the RPM is actually matching. Hopefully you guys can see this right here. So you would have like uh, 350 in there for the rear gear so because the transmission has 1.15 in fourth gear that's the ratio uh you're not going to get that exactly to work out being 350 so i came back in here adjusted that to four and 4.1 to see where it puts me and now i'm seeing that 57 5600 rpm on the other pass where i rubbed it out a little bit more you're seeing 5875, 5850 that I was revving it out to. So now that gives us a more uh, correct graph at 277, 274, and 314 and 319 pound feet of torque at 4475. And on this run, it saw a peak at 4325. Before you guys run and jump in the comments, say, no way it makes that much torque. It doesn't. That's actually the correct number. I just didn't understand how to manipulate that at that point in time. Uh, I was getting consistent results. I just knew torque was high. And then I, you'll see in the video, I start figuring out uh, that RPM is off as well. So let's go ahead and jump back into the video. The thing that's different um, to calculate the RPM, engine, engine wheel speed RPM and gear ratio. The transmission in fourth gear on this is not one to one. It's 1 1.0 or something like that, 1.08, I think. Uh, so that might be throwing it off as well, but keep playing with it and keep learning. All right, so the next run made 274 horsepower and 364 torque. So it's just down a couple from the last one. So what I did there at the very beginning of the run is I watched RPM and it's a good 500 RPM off just rolling even before I even start the dyno. So what this is picking up and what that's doing is like 500 off, which converter and everything else, maybe the way it calculates it, I'm not sure. That's some stuff I wanna research and figure out and understand. Uh, maybe that's where you need that RPM sensor. So really cool, otherwise, I mean, you could make back-to-back -back runs, it would show it. If a car had like a Holley or even on here, um, you really don't have to have the exact RPM matching up. It'll just kind of throw off where peak horsepower and torque is at. But otherwise, I could use that data, make some adjustments, come back, make another pool, and you know, with it, just try to be consistent. If I'm gonna start at 50, I need to start at 50. If I'm gonna start at 40, 40, 60, 60, whatever. Um, and as long as I do that each time, the readings are looking like they're pretty dang close. So you can see where I manipulate them some a little bit. And then you could start making adjustments. And if it starts making more power, you know you're doing the right thing. It starts making less power, you know you're not. So the big question for the day is I'll go ahead and take them last two. Clyde ended up making 277 horsepower and 368 foot-pounds of torque. So not too bad for a car that goes 1260, but it only weighs 2,410 pounds. But that's kind of fun to be able to see that. So now once we put a cam, maybe intake and stuff on this car, come back in, retune it, and see what it does. I can even just come in here and play with tunes to try to get a little bit more horsepower of the timing, air fuel, lean it out, and see what it does. So a lot of stuff that I'm still just trying to learn, figure out, and all of that, but it's up, it's running, the dyno's working, I got some learning to do, some practicing to do, so then I can start doing more cars. As I get more cars and do more, we'll put some of our other cars on these as well, play with them. I don't want to step up to, you know, like 1,500 horsepower yet, or like the 1,000 that's on the Camaro, um, until I get a little more comfortable with it. That's why this worked out perfect. It doesn't make a crazy amount of power, but it does have its own struggles to get it figured out. So that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed me figuring out how to learn to run a dyno. A lot more to come. I promise it'll get smoother and better, but this is what I got to do. I got to sit in here and make pulls and just learn what I'm doing. It's kind of self-taught at this point, other than what I learned in a couple hour class. So I appreciate everybody for watching. If you want more tuning, dyno videos, or anything else from Build Tune Race, please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up.
pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I've been on the flex since flex zone. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crush. Boy, I got God, don't fear none. My line busy, take no calls. Feels like I don't have no flaws. Snakes in the grass, cut those off. Yo, squad, shaggy, my bros rock. No breaks, we go, 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 go. So that's a pretty quick view of taking this off the hubs. Not too bad. Drop it down and torque it down. And take the Mazda home.